just to not waste more time. <laughs> so I was walking back home. Uh, I moved to Cambridge. And while walking back here, I got robbed. And I remember the guy carrying something in his pocket. I don't know if it was a knife or a gun or maybe nothing at all. But it was something about his personality and his imposition that I ended up giving up all my wallets and cash and card to him. And then when I came back home, I was really traumatized. And as you can see, I have no muscles there. So I went to my studio and I got some thermoplastic, made some synthetic muscles. Um, and these are like really thin, paper thin, so you can literally fold them, flex them, and when you wear them, no one can really uh, see that you're wearing something underneath your clothes. <laughs> and what you see there uh, are pneumatic, uh, is a pneumatic system which kind of pumps in air into the muscles. So when it's off, nothing happens, but when it's on, um, as you can see, <laughs> when I twist my muscles, uh, I end up getting this nice uh, uh, pack as well as like the six pack here. And I walked back home uh, after that, wearing this, activated. And I think people thought I was the one who was going to rob them. <laughs> so as you can guess by now, I'm not an educationist. Uh, I have nothing to say about education. I have had a very bad education myself. I went very late to school. Um, I mean, I didn't go back to university after two years in, into undergrad. And then I crashed into a design school where I was not even enrolled. You know, there's so many students in the class, they don't know if there's one more guy in the class. <laughs> but I think what I can tell you about is learning, because my dad, who's a plumber, he taught me his trade when I was a kid. So I started making things with my hands and started thinking with my hands pretty early on. And my mother used to tell me stories, lovely stories. And that, I think, made me very creative, very inquisitive, very imaginative, and very empathetic. Later on, I think when I was 16 or 17, um, I wanted to learn the guitar to be like the school guy and like impress girls, but I really failed big time. Um, later on, I stumbled upon this phenomena where if you apply a symmetric waveform to a really tiny force actuator, it kind of gives you a sensation of push and pull. So imagine, um, like right here, I've made this apparatus which I wear on my hands. And what happens is uh, each of my finger gets an illusionary push and pull. It's not really robotic as if someone's pushing you, but it's more of a nudge, a really tiny nudge. So what happens now if I take this and I pick up a guitar, or in this case, a ukulele? So now, um, these fingers, they take my fingers and put them into the right chord position. So you can imagine I'm downloading a song onto my hand and playing without knowing how to play it. And it's not only that, because you could argue this is not really learning. This is just following instructions in a way. But what happens with the system is, first, it teaches you where you, know, you follow the instructions and you get to the right chord position. More into the process, it actually corrects you only when you're wrong. Otherwise, it doesn't interfere at all. And much more into the process when you are really playing well, it actually misguides you. It actually misguides you so that you can explore and make mistakes and make new tunes of your own. So, Going from uh, muscles to hands, I worked my way down to the shoes uh, through Tokyo. So I used to make um, futuristic sex toys in Tokyo. <laughs> but <laughs> at one point, we can talk more about it over beer or drinks later. Um, so I grew up in a forest, and I, was, I used to walk barefoot. And there's something beautiful about walking barefoot because you know you can really sense everything as you're walking. And there's something beautiful about forests not having roads because anywhere you walk becomes your way, becomes your path, becomes your road. And that is so beautiful because there's so much wonder, wonder around us everywhere, but we just never go and see that. And then later in my life, I moved to different cities. I moved to Bombay, Singapore, Phnom Penh, Tokyo, London, New York, and Boston now to Seattle. And everywhere I went, I saw this thing. And I got trapped into this thing, this five inch slab of glass, where you experience this forest of a city, not by sensing it, but by asking questions to Google, where should I go? Asking questions to Yelp, where should I eat my food? And for me, after a point, it was, how can I get this joy and serendipity of my childhood, of this 
really wonderful learning and learning by exploring back into my life. So I made these things called super shoes. So these are essentially silicon insoles. They tickle your feet. So as you can see, um, the, the, the three actuators on the left-hand side are ticklers. And the one on the, left and, the, one on the right-hand side is a pad, a capacitive pad, which senses your taps. The rest of it is the circuits. And it charges inductively. And all of this is in a silicon insole, which can be flexed, folded, stretched. And it can be put in any of your shoe, and any of your shoe becomes a super shoe. So taking these super shoes, um, so the way, it, the way the whole system uh, works is with this tickling interface, where if your right feet tickles, take a right turn. If your left feet tickles, take a left turn. If no tickle, keep going. If all tickles, stop. <laughs> so yeah, you could definitely do navigation with this now. You can tell your shoes where you want to go, and they'll take you there. But that's like Google Maps again, right? So I made this um, software which goes with it, where you can input your personality, what kind of food you like, music you like, what are your tastes and preferences. And now the shoes know um, where you are, your tasks, your calendars, and they know this from your phone, because they talk to your phone for internet and uh, GPS. Um, and then what happens is I'm in London right now, and the shoes know that I like sushi. So the shoes would take me to a, tickle me. <laughs> They would tickle me and take me to a sushi place. I can, of course, look at my phone and figure out what, is, what it is suggesting me, but the beauty is being surprised. So they tickle you and take you to a place. Or, for example, if I want to pick up wine on my way back home, and I always forget because I don't look at my calendar and my phone all the time. So now, when I'm actually in front of the wine shop, uh, the shoes tickle me, and I look up and I'm like, oh, yeah, I need to pick up wine. So because the world, in a way, is your screen, right? And again, you could say that this is a smartphone strapped onto your feet now because it's reminding you, it is recommending things, and it is navigating you. What I realized was the most beautiful walks I've had are the ones where I've walked with a friend who knows the place, and I have offloaded my cognition, my thinking, my worry of where am I going to him or her. And I have felt so relaxed after it because I didn't have to think where I'm going. And I often don't take breaks, and I'm sure you also don't take breaks in your day. So what the shoes do now is if you just tell the shoes that I want to take a 15-minute break, and the shoes would plan out a route for you so that you go back to your starting point in 15 minutes. And the beauty is you don't know where you're going. It's only at the end of the road that you know if it's a right turn or a left turn. So after breaks, I realized that, uh, by the way, that is where I used to live and that is where I used to work. And I used to always take this one optimum route. And all of us do that. From A to B, we always take the closest, shortest route. But in reality, the way a city is designed, there are like multiple, n number of ways you can go. But you never take them. So now the shoes, every morning, suggest me different ways, different routes to, to go to work and back. And this was nice. It was an amazing experience. But at the end of it, there was something still missing. And I think what was missing was the art of getting lost, the art of getting lost I think was lost in the city. And now what happens is, uh, when you're in this mode, or the lost, getting lost mode, the shoes basically, um, you can walk anywhere you want, anywhere you want, without worrying if you'll get lost or not. And in the end of it, you just tap your feet thrice, and the shoes take you back home. So from the muscles and the hands and uh, the feet, and then came the skin. There's something beautiful again about the skin. I know I'm going to use the word beautiful a lot because I really think a lot of things are beautiful. And like, take a moment to look at your skin. You, know? you can literally pinch it, pull it. It has a texture. You can feel it. You can sense it. And this is also data, in a way. And if you look at our data, the digital data, it's all concealed behind this slab of glass, a flat slab of glass. Even 3D TV that we say is actually an illusion, right? Because you wear something and what you see is still on a slab of glass. So I wanted to make a new kind of a display, a new kind of computer, where you can actually pinch, pull, push your data and actually feel things. And for me, solids are beautiful because they have a definite form. And liquids are even more beautiful because they're fluid. 
So what if I could create a hybrid of both of these, a computer which is a hybrid of solids and liquids? So this is the system where there's a, there's a projector and depth camera on top, and it's made out of this elastic silicon, um, which, is, which also remembers shapes. So what you can do with it is all these interactions where you can um, intrude into it, extrude into it, you can pinch, pull, push, warp, compress, so on and so forth. But to give you a teaser of it, here's an example. This is a terrain, and here I'm intruding into it to see the soil and water layer, pulling out to see the atmospheric layer. I am doing an S-bend, that's a plumbing reference there, but S-bend and stitching together two layers to see them laterally. And I can actually pull out a mountain and it remembers the shape. It stays like that. I can prod into the mountain to see minerals inside. And all of this with your own fingers, your data is something that you're touching now. And of course, like a touch screen, you can draw a river and expand and compress it. And if that was not enough, I think you can also pull out the entire screen outside and you can see the layers of soil underneath. And for me, I think this represents this vision where imagine you have your smartphone and you can stretch it and it becomes an iPad and stretch it more, it becomes a laptop and you warp it, it becomes a cube and you kind of smudge it, becomes this sphere and then you throw it out and it breaks into a million small cubes, each of them a computer also. Okay, so from the skin, um, we go to the soul. So I think somehow um, there are seven billion people in the world, right? All of us are learners and teachers. All of us have had experiences. All of us have, have something to share and something to teach each other. And the best way to really learn and um, understand someone is to get into someone's head, to really experience their life, to really interact with them and talk with them in their head. So how would it be to you know, get into the head of Picasso while he's painting and experience and even collaborate with him? So I haven't yet started uh, practicing occult, uh, nor have I mastered the art of afterlife for Picasso. So, what I decided instead was to make something that would sit on the shoulder, like a parrot, like a small, cute parrot. And um, what this would do is, uh, for the person who's wearing this, in this case, uh, the host, the host is the one who wears this, um, this has a camera and a laser pointer on a motorized head. So even if I'm looking here, uh, the guest who's on my shoulder can look somewhere else. And they can whisper into my ears and hear what I'm hearing, and they can tap on my shoulders. And, the guest who is on my shoulder can log into the system, can either learn, teach, hire someone, or even play, or even observe or travel. And they can go to this map and see the people who are live, who are wearing this device right now, who are hosts. And in this case, there's someone who wants to teach um, how to make a paper crane. And they can jump into that session, and they would be able to do this on a laptop or any of your computers, basically. So. I think uh, there are some very interesting cases that happen with this. One is uh, this idea of um, how many of you have had problems when you know you have something breaks down in your home and you don't know how to fix it, and you call customer service and you stay online for like hours and hours. I mean, most of us here. So here in this case, if you're wearing this device, someone else could actually be part of your reality right now, point at things, ask things, and uh, help you out. Or even things like uh, if, you're if you're bicycling and you, if your bicycle breaks down, um, someone could come and help you there. Or if you're traveling or learning origami and so on and so forth, even learning music. Um, and th there is something interesting about news and what happens around the world where normally we see all these things on YouTube or in newspapers, but that's their version of it. But what if you could really get into someone's shoulder who is actually right now in that area and through them talk to strangers, talk to people in the area? So these are some of my experiments with learning and learning about learning and learning tools. 
I think the education system today, more often than not, becomes this externally inflicted pain. And learning, on the other side, um, is this self-inflicted enlightenment. And now that we're thinking about the future of education, I really, my wish is that uh, this, a new education system which paves way into a lifelong learning through sensorial as well as experiential means, because at the end of the day, we think both with our minds and our hands. Thank you. Thank you.